was it deliberate to actually make an album of just one anthem after another? Uh, no, the, the, the approach was to make it as punchy and direct as we possibly could. And because we write good choruses, then it becomes, I suppose it becomes a bit anthemic. I suppose that's probably what happens. But <laughs> I think we wanted it to be really punchy. That was the whole point. So really punchy and direct. Yeah, it, it, it actually sounds like, um, it sounds like early levelers, but with, with a few, well, quite a few things you've learned, obviously, on the way to where you are now. So it's more melodic, but it has that punchy power of the early days. I mean, when I was listening to it with my headphones on, I, I, I can actually hear all the songs getting played live at Beautiful Days. You can see everyone's hands in the air. So I can actually see the song's reaction by listening to them, which is a pretty good sign, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. Songs we play, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. If we ever get to play them, that'd be brilliant. But that, that's, that was very much in our mind. It was like, yeah, are these going to work live? Are these going to get people excited in an audience who they go play this you know, first chord and people are recognising straight away and go, yeah, I love this one. And that's kind of like, yeah, that's where it was at. In a sense. And recorded pretty much live in the studio as well. So, you know, we did a lot of rehearsing rather than a lot of recording, if you know what I mean. So, you know, we wanted them all to sound live and and like mark said we just wanted there to be no chaff we just wanted to cut it down as short and sweet and punchy as we possibly could why was that was there a decision about that was it was it like just because we get bored you know what i mean it's like just wanted to make something that was just you know consistently good all the way through really it's interesting that any band that goes for quite a few decades they always seem to go in a circle and end up back if they're smart, yeah. doing the thing they did best when they came through in the first place, but finessed it in a way, like I said before, it's not a retro record, it's very much what you are now, but it's playing to all your strengths. Was that, yeah. like, was that an instinctive thing, or was that just think, fuck I it, you just want to sound like a circus? I think you're right. I think you're right, John. It's just the way things happen with bands. It is literally, you, you, you craft what you do, you get better at what you do, you understand more of what you do, and then suddenly... You know, you, you come back to what you actually do really well, and you just suddenly nail it, and it's like there's more you. And like, like I said, that record sounds like it belongs in the first three or four records we made. You know, probably the fourth record it should be in, or something like that. Somewhere in that period of time, and like it's the punk rock record we wanted to make, but we were kind of folky-ish then, but still punky, punky in speed, but not so much in guitars. Mm. And it's like you know, and it all comes around, and we did. We had other records in between, but yeah, it's, it's it's interesting how it does come out to being that sort of thing, and, and also having stories to tell. That's the thing that's really important with this record. A lot of the records in the past have come out of like periods of our life where we haven't really got a lot to say. There hasn't been a lot going on, but there's been a lot to say and a lot going on for us personally and in the world as a whole. So suddenly the subject matter was vast. So we were we were, we were able to literally every song would have merit in its own way. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's quite. I guess it's quite hard to write these days a contemporary record on the world because as soon as you finish the song, a week later, everything's <laughs> unfortunately got worse. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be. <laughs> I mean, where, was it? Where, I know where Jeremy, you write a lot of the lyrics. I mean, what? How did it work this time? Was it? Was it? Um, was it a shared thing, or was it? Or uh, it's, it's a shared thing. I mean, I, I don't write a lot of them. I, you know, I write. I write some of them. So, you know, you know, Mark and Sire, the songwriters, they they write, you know, complete songs themselves. I just I just chip in lyrics every now and then, you know. Um No, I think yeah. actually Jeremy, as you think about it, it's, it's about a third Simon's lyrics, third yours and the third yeah. mine. Yeah. 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 Three lyric writers of the band, it actually works out quite well because we balance each other out quite well as a whole in an album construct. So is it, yeah. do, you t- do you tend to have rights slightly different ways lyrically? Yeah, slight, slightly different ways. I mean, you know, I say we had like um, Generation Fear, like, you know, Mark had that pretty much written and then he kind of gave it to me at the last minute to kind of finesse some of the lyrics and and that was it, you know, and it was like a, a how would you say, like a, a real collaboration, collaborative effort, you know. So I mean, a song like that, what was, I mean, actually, no, I'm, just going, I'm interested in the songwriting thing. So, so Mark, what kind of lyrics would you write? Would you write more... I'm, I'm guessing here, but Jeremy, because I'm guessing because he comes from that kind of crass world, etc. Mm. So that that wouldn't be how you'd write all your lyrics, but that's the background to them. I mean, um, Jeremy, you come more from um, the classic rock, you know. The, the, yeah, more the, the, the classic rock, folky, sort of like ballady, biggie, sort of like 
but concepts within concepts, or sort of try and do that. Sort of like you're listening to one song, we're actually listening to another one all together. That's sort of like the Lennon approach to songwriting, where you think you listen to one thing, which it sounds great and it's perfect, but really there's a subtext. And I like I like to write like that. So that's yeah, like so a lot of levels, storytelling, I guess as well. Yeah, yeah, storytelling, hidden storytelling, and obvious storytelling as well. If you can get it in there. And, and, and Jeremy, would you be like making a like more like a point, but um, in, in a poetic way, not like a direct slogan? Yeah, I like to I like to finish on a on a big bang kind of thing, you know. Mm. But uh, I'll also like Mark. I like write. I like stories. Mm. You know, I think that's where we all. I think that's where all three of us who write the words. That's where we all kind of coalesce. Is in, you know, that we like. We do, we each all like to write a story. Mm. What, what about side? Does he does he have his own sort of distinctive flavour, sort of in between this or to the side of this? Well, size size much more in, in the in the folk, folk sort of idiom of like verses, long verses, and of course, is it certain that come out of verses but with a tie up ending, that sort of thing, rather than like big chorus, yeah. that, sort of, that sort of thing. So, so you know, but all three of us, it's, it's getting to the point now with the same band, you know, like so long, it's hard to tell who wrote what. It's like we could tell. Yeah. Did Joe write this one or does Mick write this one? It's like, who knows, really? You know, unless you can look right into it, you don't really know. It. And you don't really care. It's from the band. Yeah. yeah that's not the point, you know. That's why we, that's why we all get credited equally on it. Because <laughs> yeah. it really doesn't matter who actually did what at the end of the day. It's a band thing. Mm, mm. I mean, that's, I that's, mean, that's But a song that come out, we all have to like it. We all have to pretty much agree with what it's saying. You know, so it's always a band thing. So, so at the beginning of the process of creating this, I'm guessing, what, was it two years ago? You, I mean, it's eight years since the last album. Would it be yeah. two years since you started putting this one together? I think we actually, when we decided to make it, it happened really quickly. Within about, probably about six months, we recorded the whole thing. But we have been doing some work in bits and pieces before during the eight years, where we do false starts and stuff and never quite had enough time or energy or enthusiasm to actually get the whole thing going because we were doing various things and things were going on. And so eventually when we got into the studio and we, we tied ourselves down, it was like, okay, let's go. We worked really hard and I suppose, yeah, about six months, quite intense work. And then it was done. It was like, and we're getting mixes back towards the end of it as well, which is great. So what was yeah. the trigger point that tipped you into actually just getting it done? Was it, was it just kind of like, wow, it's been, it's been years since I made a record, we better get one done. Or was it, there was a point in time where you just you felt that you had to say something, you had to sing something about what was going yeah. on? I think it was it was a mixture of the two. It was like a, things were going too quickly, and we weren't. We were writing songs, like you said, and suddenly we're coming out of date. It's like we really, literally, we're running to catch up here. So, and you know, as we've as it's been proven, we've already sort of kind of. We, the thing is, because of the way we've written this album, it's kind of just about fits into this era that we're now in. It actually does make sense. Sometimes like Generation Fear make more sense now, even than they did then. A lot of the songs actually make more sense. It is almost like we wrote it during since April. When we're actually writing from April last year, April 19, and it's like it sounds like we did from April 20, which is weird. Mm. But it does fit in. Crazy, like prescience on it. I <laughs> feel <laughs> <laughs> you. It does. It sounds like we, we we wrote it a couple of months ago. You know, <laughs> it's like almost you know six years worth of work on and off writing work, not recording or anything. Um, but yeah, you know, I listened to it yesterday and I was like, yeah, fuck me, it sounds, yeah, it's properly contemporary. It's a real, you know, I'm really pleased with it. I think it's a real good statement of where the levels are at now. Mm. Now, like I was saying initially, it's, it's powerful, concise. Every, every song's like a single anthemic. I mean, it's a distillation of all the good things that about the levels each. So I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. I was thinking, well, for Jeremy, I was thinking, you know, the world you grew up in. The, the you know the dystopian vision of that world, you know, the, the post-punk kind of crass world, it seems like a luxury now when you think what crass had to be annoyed about. <laughs> and, um, uh, it does for me. We've, we've always been a bit more kind of positive than I mean. I mean, crass. I mean, we always. I mean, they were always, you know, said you've got to be, you've got to change things, do things yourself, the DIY thing, and that's I think, you know, what what we've taken from them. But we we try and be musically a little bit more positive, but. But, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, times are insidious and hard, and and yeah. So there's there's no shortage of us for songs to sing, you know, stuff to sing about. That's for sure. It's it's an interesting kind of dichotomy, really, because the music's very up, 
And part, maybe part of the job of Band Like Eleven is, is, is to make people feel good, you know, um, soundtrack the community, uplifting, empowering, which, which you're really great at. But lyrically, it's actually very down, isn't it? Because the current situation. Really down. Now, I listened to it the other day, like Jeremy, and I listened to the lyrics, I was going, oh my God, some of this, that actually right now is quite hard to take. You know what I'm yeah. saying? What, what would have been nice, if it have been a really nice happy party song about something really positive and just put one <laughs> in there, but you know, but we haven't. It's just that it is, and we never have, so that's not the point, really. But it is like, it is, you know, sometimes I think in times of darkness, people need a little bit more light. But if you actually listen to the record, it actually, at the end of it, you're more uplifted than you thought you were going to be. Because, yeah, because I mean, the melodies and the, and the choruses, and actually the chorus statements are always really positive. Yeah. So it's, it's even in the song, you know, like the Bruce Springsteen thing, where you can switch, you know, the verse and the chorus can all, almost be having an argument with each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly. Half the point of it, you know. I think, I think, you know, we've definitely made darker records, but this is probably the most intense one we made. You know, it's an intense, demanding listen. I mean, what, what, what do you think the role of a musician is now? You know, this right now, this very minute, because, you know, like we talked before, it's really hard to get out there and gig. You made a record that's, you know, it's, it's literally very prescient. Uh, it's a very uplifting record, a great live record, which you can't play live. And um, is, is there a role for a musician to play at this point in time? It's a really, it's really interesting quite, question. I think, I think it's a really interesting question. I really do. I mean, I'm thinking about it all the time. It's like, what, what are we? What are we? If we haven't got a platform, which is a stage for us, right? It really is a stage. That's where we exist as a band. We exist on a stage. So without a stage, it's very difficult. We're not great at doing sort of like media and doing things like that and shouting our voice through, uh, getting the voice heard and saying things through digital information, that sort of thing. We're not very good at it. Not what we do. We're on a stage. That's how we do it. So denied that, we're quite impudent, and it's quite it's quite odd for us. It's a very unusual situation. All we can do, and what we do do, is remain very connected to our fans, the people that are into the band, and so we're closely connected with them, and give as much hope and sort of like positivity to them. Whether it's like, that's that's what we do through our social media. That's how we remain in contact. But, we, but the idea of like championing a cause to sort of like. To, to what ends, you know, we're out of stage, what are we? It's a very yeah, weird. It's, 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 it's odd, isn't it? It's a very odd philosophical question, isn't it? I mean, what, what, what are your thoughts on that, Jeremy? Uh, well, you know, I thought, you know, at the beginning of the year, I'm, I'm thinking, that's yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm part of something extraordinary. And, and now I'm ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a guy fucking baking and looking after my garden like every other cunt. <laughs> 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 I mean, but I think the, the job of a musician has stayed the same, you know, it's to entertain and inform. That's, that's what we do. You know, we do it at the minute. We, we have to do it with our, with our recorded output because we're denied, you know, a, a live arena, which is our, our preferred way, obviously. But, but um, you know, this record we'll have, we'll have to just do for now because it's a great record. You know, it's, it says everything we want to say. You know, we just gutted that we can't get out there and play it. Yeah, yeah in, in a strange way, in a strange way, the timing was good. We literally did just finish the whole thing, package and everything. We even did the last thing we did together was some videos for it. So that, that so we managed to literally nail everything together for what it is in order to put it out. So that's a good thing because at least something valid from mm -hmm. the levelers out there that like carry some some of us, and some of our energy into the world. But other than that, that's that's like Jeremy says, that's all we've got. Apart from that. Guys that bake. Yeah. <laughs> Gardeners and cooks. <laughs> the title of the album piece is it's on, on paper of optimistic, but it just saying the bump that comes the record is actually kind of dual edged, but I couldn't work out what the dual edged thing about that was. Is it is it like it's because it's so hopeful to be in a situation of peace and it does not actually exist? Is that the dual edge or is there more to it than that? Pretty much. Mm. Pretty, Pretty much. much. Pretty much that. It's, it's, it's aspirational. It's purely an aspirational title. It's like, wouldn't it be great? It should be called that, really. Wouldn't it be great if there was some? And then, yeah. But, you know, peace in itself is a strong enough word, a strong enough statement, and an interesting enough word for people to use. Because peace doesn't mean that anymore. Yeah. It really doesn't, and it doesn't mean that anymore. <laughs> it depends. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a really interesting word. It's like peace. For us, you know, a lot of it's about peace of mind for me. Mm -hmm. it's that. So it's got mental peace, you know. Mm. And Jeremy, same, same with you. 
Yeah, same, same. You know, it's, it's 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 kind of the undercurrent that runs through all the songs. I think it's, you know, it's it's like this is what we want. You know, if we had a bit of peace, we wouldn't need to write. You know, at all. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what we're doing. You know, that's that's kind of the the un, un uh, subtext, basically. You know, but like Mark says, you know, it's, it's ambiguous enough that it gives people something to talk about as well. You know, and I think that's all good when when you're listening to an album with your mates, like old school style. You can actually talk about things. Mm. Oh, yeah. I guess with the strength of a record that has content to it is people go oh I think that I feel like that as well and the skill of a songwriter is to articulate the feelings that the audience have so I guess that's what you do with your community isn't it yeah we try. that's what we're hoping yeah like, like, like your mayors of a really weird little village well quite actually a very big town <laughs> <laughs> we're missing our little village <laughs> Well, that is, isn't that one of the other kind of quite remarkable things about the band is how you you actually seem to get bigger without anybody's permission, which is actually make, makes you feel quite warm in your heart, that kind of thing, when you watch that happen. Yeah, it, it, it's great. I mean, it's not something we particularly understand, but it's, it's, it's fantastic that it goes on and that people really, you know, when these times do change, which, you know, they will, because they definitely do change and revert. But uh, when they do, it's going to be, Tremendous relief to see everybody again. <laughs> and it's like actually have that connection because it, it is strange. It is very strange not having that direct connection with, with people. You know, it, it is. It is. It's, it's, um, we we learn from them all the time. You know, what I mean, at the moment without that, that direct contact, it's very difficult to learn. Yeah. The other remarkable Great. thing I think is when 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 I introduce you every now and then on stage at beautiful days, I look out at the crowd. And they're really young. I, just, I think there's people there, the front row's all about 20 years old. And I know all bands go, yeah, we have a really young crowd. And I go to their gigs and they haven't. But oddly, somehow you've managed to go through about three generations. But I know some of them be their parents playing the records, etc. But there's, there's definitely kids there whose parents probably don't like the levels or know about you. Yeah. I, I can't work out how they even know you're there, but somehow they do, don't they? Well, I don't, I don't have anybody fans that have any music these days. I mean, the only one I do is through, through Louder Than War, really, to be honest. It's <laughs> really fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's, it's like, there aren't many ways of getting it. People seem to be getting it almost by os osmosis, seemingly. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you, it's almost by accident how you find music. And I think that's the case with the levelers. But if you, it's such a strong thing that we have that if you find it, if it's, if it's your taste, then you, you're in. And there's a lot of it to listen to. And there's a lot of tendrils of, of, of which it goes to other bands and other acts and the whole world of, of similar like-minded beings. And longevity. Oh, you know, we're, we're properly kind of old school in that we're kind of a word of mouth band. It's like people, that's how our message gets out. People, you know, people tell other people about us. You know, it's, it's proper lo-fi old school, I think. You know, not all of it, obviously, but, but mm. quite a surprising amount from what I, what I gather. Mm. Yeah, I guess, I guess that combines what Mark was saying about the band does have a very strong identity. So if, if yeah. I suppose if you were 15 and you were out there looking for a very idealistic band of that kind of came out of punk and went off on a, on a kind of English folk tangent, you're, you're only ever going to end up getting to the, getting to the left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> we are, we are, you know, we're honest and we are, if you're looking for that, we are the fucking real thing, you know, simple as that. Mm. Which, which I guess creates your unique position, isn't it? Because um, that's what makes you not a fashionable band. And the fashionable bands are always wanting to try too hard to fit in, and you've just always been what you are. Just, just it's kind of odd hotchpotch of people, but somehow they all meet together. Yeah. It's very direct to the music. In the middle of all that, you find a consensus with the music, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, and it's a, and it's an interesting. Uh, probably a lot of people as well they're into the band they're, they're, they're very different world views but they might have, they're, they're all sort of concentrate sometimes they collide but not always in agreeing which is great as well because it's not like this is a it's not like a political party mm. it's a very sort of like an interesting bouncing of, of, of ideas space as well yeah it's, it's not a manifesto which never works i think in music culture does it yeah no so so but, but in the last few years both of you have gone through quite um sort of personal turmoil I guess I mean because Mark you were uh, well you nearly drowned <laughs> and, and, and Jeremy you, you, had, you had a few adventures and had to get yourself back on your feet again I don't know how far you want to go into this but um, I have 
terrible nervous exhaustion, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's the euphemism I was trying to think of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nervous exhaustion, hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, next time, next time, go to the doctor and don't, don't be. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we, we and Mark went, both went to the same nervous exhaustion hospital. <laughs> <laughs> but you came out the other side, and I'm just wondering um, how much that had to do with the record. Because Mark, speaking to you here, this is the clearest and most direct I've heard you speak since I've known you, really. You know, you seem, okay. you seem very happy yourself and very... Um, you, see, you seem to have a, the visions there. You know, you, can, you know, it's not clouded by anything, you know, so... No. That's right, yeah, no, they, they, but it started, yeah, at the beginning of the record, really. It was like, that's when you know, the, I wanted the boys to get together. It was like, I felt focused. So like, let's do something. Let's go. Let's press go. Phoned up Sean Lakeman, said, if you want to do it, and he was like, yeah, I'll do it. Then asked everyone else, I said, Sean's up for it, if you're up for it, and everyone else said yes. So, yeah, just a, just a focus of time, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I mean, the last time you played Beautiful Days, that was the most focused the gig had been as well, you know, it was... No. You can feel it's much more focused. I mean, it's always good, but that thing where it, when it's really focused, it's more punk rock for me, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, straight edge, absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, actually, the music is, is the drug, in it? Which is the thing that takes <laughs> decades well, to work out. <laughs> it, it, it's, funny, it's funny how long it takes you to realise that it's the most important thing there is. Yeah, yeah, especially when you have things to say. and you, you, But it's, it's hard, and it? it's like being in a band, because people in bands are more apt to be more sensitive to the world and more likely to blot out that sensitivity in a situation where getting blotted out is actually very easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> so so was it with you, Jeremy, as well, coming out of the other side of um, the, the uh, whatever it was, did it, did it make you feel uh, more sort of focused on your art and your music? Yeah, eventually. Yeah, it's a bit raw to start off with, you know, I felt very... Um, exposed mm. you know but that's that's the part that's the great thing about being in a band is that you've always got other people around you mm. you know so for a little while i was kind of feeding off of everyone else's enthusiasm and then you know when i found my feet again i was like yeah you know bang straight in straight back at it you know it's all good did, did it affect your creativity as well as, as i mean not just as a, a, a lyric writer or uh, and a bass player, but also as an artist, as a painter, did you find it easier or did you find it more difficult to paint for? Uh, yeah, it's difficult. I went through a difficult, difficult phase, you know, but at the end of the day, it didn't make that much difference. Mm. You know, it changed a little bit. Well, the way I was going about saying things changed a little bit, but it wasn't a huge, you know, it wasn't any kind of huge revelation going on, I don't think. I guess, I guess as well, I'm, 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 this is kind of like me try, coming from the outside, trying to join bits of string together. But because the album sounds more focused, I'm just wondering if it's because your mental and physical state was more focused. That even without oh, noticing, yeah. you're, you're yeah. playing oh, yeah. to, the songs are concise. It's making yeah. a point. We all, we all kind of wanted that. And also, you know, credit, you got, credit is due to Sean Lakeman as well, you know, for... Because, you know, we're, we're, we're good at coming up with our own mission statements, but we're pretty poor at actually sticking to them, you know. <laughs> so he, he sticks to the mission statement, you know. He's like, fuck, you know, if you want to deviate from it, then you have to give a good reason why, you know. So, so, so he kept it's us in... It's interesting you mentioned mission statements. And would the, is that something that's like a phrase or would it... It's just felt. Is, is it a felt thing? Because we started this record with a... Like like you were saying, and like Mark said, that we just wanted to make something that was really concise and bang 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 bang, you know, with no no chaff, you know, just just as yeah, just as punchy as we could possibly get it. That that was that was the idea from the moment we started. Yeah, yeah, and is that, is that true for you as well, Mark? Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it's a thing is, it's like the, the focus comes from all of us being in the room together. Everybody, energy has to be the same level. Everyone's commitment has to be the same level. That's probably why it took eight years to make it, to be honest. Mm. Like, different, different people at different points of their life and whatever was going on with them. And to actually have everybody in the same, on the same page and be enthusiastic about what they're doing, to make that... And that, that doesn't happen that often with an artistic group of people because you have got five, an element of five plus, actually. If you think about it, bands are more than just the people that are on, in the band. So there's people around them as well. They have to feel the same. 
So to get that amount of energy together and to put it to coalesce into an actual moment is rare and it's great when you get it. And that's why I was really pleased when we did it. And it was like, and that's why it was actually quite quick when it actually we got down to it. And that's the thing, that's what created the focus. Everyone had the same energy, everyone wanted the same thing out of it. It's, it's interesting, uh, probably carrying off that point, but longevity doesn't suit a lot of bands, does it? But somehow, even your, your story zigzagged around all over the place. Uh, the sort of the wisdom of longevity kind of sits well on the level of shoulders. Is that something you're aware of? Or do you, when you go in the room, you still feel about 18 and... <laughs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> no, sometimes, sometimes we really do. Literally, you know, it's hard to, you know, it's hard not to be jaundiced. It's hard not to be cynical. It's hard not to be absurd about the whole thing. But when, when suddenly something happens in a room, between a good a group of musicians that is exciting, mm. there's nothing better. Contrawise, you can have the same group of musicians the next day playing, kicking something around the room. They're so depressing, <laughs> you want to kill yourself because <laughs> it's that depressing. But you, you know, you're fighting for something here. You're fighting for you. are fighting for something. So you, you know, and so you, you know, the depressing moments are equally balanced out by the brilliant moments, and then you get it together, and then towards the end when we're getting mixes back, we're going like, wow, this is just this is great. This is going really well so it sped up towards the end mm. to really because everybody could feel what the vision was and everybody once it once that you hear it back you know where you're going yeah exactly that it's like so we know where you know we, we, your benchmark is set so anything that happens after that is below that no good mm. so you know so songs you know a lot of, a lot of songs got thrown away a lot of um records you know that tracks and stuff that we just we worked really hard but didn't quite make it you know yeah. and that's just the way of it and you know, you know, in art, you know, you've got to be prepared to murder your babies, and sometimes we did. Yeah, it's some, it's some, it's some good songs as well, but they just didn't fit in with the album. You know, it was so it was it was quite it was a bit harder decision this time, I thought, than other times with what we put on and what we left off. Yeah, because quite often, um, sometimes even the best songs may not make a record because the, the songs have to fit together as well, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. We're old fashioned because we do believe in the album format. Mm. And I think it still has its place. I really do. I think people try and write it off. Oh, the album is dead. It's nonsense. But I think artists, especially bands, understand an album. I think, you know, the guy from Spotify said, you have to work hard and put out more product. They said, what the fuck are you talking about? I have to make you rich. No <laughs> way. It's a ridiculous statement I've ever heard. And it's like, and it's got nothing to do with art or creativity at all. It's just like, what, you're just turning me into like a biscuit manufacturer for you. No way at all. I can give you some digital information you can give away for free and give me nothing. Mm. No, 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 no. Album's an album. And this album will stand the test of time because of that very fact that it's a collection of songs with a cover that Jeremy painted. You know, it's a collection of songs from a period of time that exists from this period of time. And people will discover it in 20 years' time digitally or otherwise, who cares, but it's an album. And that's a body of work that, that carries a, a message and a, and a passage of time. Yeah, so uh, there's, there's an interesting thing, it says in, in the bio that the, the album, and what we talked about this a bit before, but reflects the anxious state of the world, the anxious state of, of the mind of the band as well. Is, it, would you, is, is that still a truism now the record's out? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's really about that. Anxiety is a big part of modern life. You know, it's hard to hide it and it's hard to sort of like <coughs> negotiate it, but it's definitely a uh, part of ours. In many ways. I mean, what, what, what drives that anxiety? Is, is it the state of the world or is it just the way that we just are as a society these days? Yeah, it's just dealing with modern life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's the, the existential fear of the modern world. <laughs> <laughs> there it's all going on and it's none of it you know none of it seems to be improving everything seems to be slightly things are improving there's no doubt about it things are definitely getting better in certain parts of the world and certain things are definitely improving there's no two ways about it the, the, you know there are, there's change happening at such a vast speed things happen so quickly it's very difficult for anybody to negotiate is it and it Playing music is, is it, I mean, it's a way of documenting this, but it's also a way of dealing with this as well, like almost a meditative space to escape into. You know, you talk about when you're in the room playing together and you get to what the, the door is always fantastically called the communal mind. You know, everyone's mm -hmm. on the same little musical trip. 
Th mm. Those are kind of moments actually when the anxiety just evaporates and you know, so music yeah. has a purpose. It's a cathartic experience, as they say. Exactly. Which, you know, when, when we hit that stride all together, it was exactly that. Uh, and and that, that, that's something we normally get as a, as, a, as a unit of people on stage playing songs live anyway. That happens. Yeah. That, that, that's when a good gig's a good gig, when we're all gelling together and everyone's playing marvellously together. And that's the same space. It exists. It takes exactly the same space. So when you're writing the songs, like, lyrically, do you, I mean, I, I know they all come from different sources and different ideas and different ways of writing songs, but say, like, a song, that, you know, the, the Man Who Would Be King, is, is that something that starts from a specific idea and you kind of extrapolate that into a song, or is it just um, something that kind of tells you what it's about when you've actually finished writing it? Uh, that one's from two, yeah, from a very specific idea to start off with, you know, telling a story, really. Yeah, and it's and to me, it didn't have anything to do with the lyric writing. It was like, okay, so obviously, brilliantly, about what it's about and the aspiration of power. That you know, that that's a subject matter you easily wrap your head around. It's like anybody who seeks power should definitely not have it. Yeah, yeah. we do. We do seem to have some really terrible weeks at the moment. Sorry, I didn't hear you, John, talking. Over oh no, you. sorry. Um, I didn't because the song's about the world leaders, and I'm get, I'm, I don't think it's going to take a genius to work out which ones we'll, we'll talk about here. Probably the uh, the Johnson Trump axis with a, with a couple of other lunatics like Bolsonaro chucked in. This, this yeah. kind of, these kind of strutting kind of males are just slightly older than us, but the, the, the lunatics really did take over the asylum, didn't they? And is, is that is that kind of what that song's kind of alluding to? I think yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> It's disappointing that the people, for, you know, some of the, a lot of these people, you know, the Johnsons and the Cam Camerons, and all these people that, that, that led to this situation are actually our generation. That's the shocking part. It's like, how did you get to be, how does your worldview end up like that over there and mine's like this over here? Mine's based on common sense and logic and love, and yours is based on what? I don't <laughs> know. Yeah, I mean, to me, Boris Johnson is, I mean, I know Trump's got more power and he's the biggest lunatic of the lot, but Johnson's even worse for me because he came out of our generation. He grew yeah. up younger than us and he grew, and his favourite band is The Clash. And it's just like... Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> That's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. And he, he would, when he was mayor of London, he would play London's Calling real loud in his office with the windows open. It's like, it makes you feel sick. <laughs> no, he was never in that office. <laughs> the, the, day, the two days a year he turned up then. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean you, knew, you knew Joe Strummer, didn't you? I mean, he played one of your records, he'd hang out in your studio a bit, wouldn't he? And, uh, what, 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 yeah. what would his take on it? I see sometimes on the internet, those old punk forums, you know, people go, what would Joe have made of all of this? What, I mean, as people who knew him sort of a bit, what would you think he'd made of all of this? Same as us, I think it literally looked on in despair and like confusion and like trying to do something about it. But what can you do? How, how, how much can you do? You know, how much can you possibly do to face this? And you know, when decisions are made and and and, and, and political plays employers are put out there that are so subversive, so so uh, dodgy that essentially, you know, I want everybody to, to march to Parliament and burn the fucking place down. Actually, that's what I want to do. I'm sure that's what Joe would want everyone to do. Let's do it. <laughs> he, was, he, he, was, he was, I remember like when we were in the studio with him and, and just talking to him. And, and he was one of those guys that you can see behind his eyes. He's thinking about everything. He's taking in everything. I, I get the impression that nothing was really lost on him. And, you know, so I think he would have a fair few bold ideas <laughs> if he was still around. I mean, it's it's a tall order, isn't it? I mean, obviously, obviously, it's great as a band. You sort of comment on, on the anxiety, the confusion, but do you, do you ever feel like you have to have solutions? I mean, I I always think sometimes the best kind of what for want better word politics or or social thinking in music comes from asking questions and not providing the answers. You know, so I mean, what what's your thoughts on that? Exactly that. I think uh, as a job, we're there to provoke people into thought to provoke people into considering the situation and not taking their, their situation for granted and assuming that 
the powers that be know what they're doing and that the, the newspapers are always right and that the television programs they should be watching are really the ones they should be watching and that the YouTube and the bands they should listen to should be the bands they should be listening to but literally make, make people question their, their, their place in the world and, and literally think about it just think about it and actually basically common sense will lead you there and that's 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 it and uh, and hopefully that should influence enough people that was that was always our dream and here we are in 2020 <laughs> what the fuck happened <laughs> here forever <laughs> got to do another 50 30 years now <laughs> It's, it's interesting that the, the world you came out of, you know, uh, whatever people would call it, the Traveller scene, whatever, a lot of those ideas which were kind of sniffed at the time, you know, oh, look, look at them, they're dogs on bits of string, etc. all those cliches, those ideas now, and all the stuff that people talk about, I read, I, I see them in, in papers on the front page of the Daily Mail. It's like the, the, the warnings that people are coming out with 25, 30 years ago, in that world that you were very much part of, are our mainstream ideas now, aren't they? Do, do you think yeah, that's yeah. in a way that's a victory? You know, people have finally cottoned on to what you was what people were talking about. Yes, I do. I think they, 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 those things like environmental concerns and basic like uh, simple sharing concerns of, of resources and things like that, and obvious power structures and destruction of those so the, the obvious things. You know, things that we were always interested in. Yeah, there's a lot of those things that come through. And interesting, I think I'm quite optimistic. I will be optimistic. I think the, the, the period of time we're going through with Trump and the Johnstons and Johnson, all these people, it's the last hurrah of, 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 of the white man, the white man. I really do. I think those times, it's going to be over. It's got to be. I mean, you know, you know there's a dark shadow in the background, Putin. <laughs> that's scary. But that, that's a different thing altogether. Well, the thing about Putin is he's actually the dictator who actually does d d doing a bit dictator properly, <laughs> which is like, I mean, makes him double rotten, but he's actually, he's actually good at an awful job. And whereas Trump is just, a, he's not even a very good dictator. He's just <laughs> like a giant baby, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what Trump, Trump getting his shirt off and wagging it, raving around his face. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what an image. So, I mean, what... what <laughs> What, what, one of the key things that were, came out of all that, the travelling culture, was a concern for environmental concerns. I mean, and that have gone back a long way. I mean, people talk about that, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, but it kind of accelerated through music culture, through the hippies, through 70s squat idealism, and then, you know, then, then through the world you were in. And, and you, on this album, you have a song about this, like Ghosts in the Water. Mm. And, it, and it, it is getting very, very serious now. But do you find hope? in like people like Greta Thunberg, like the, a young generation that actually believes it can make this change. Yeah, I think, that, I think that without a doubt, I think that, that it has to be made and it will be made. And you, know, you, you can't, the, the thing is that the whole that culture, the, the traveling culture, the whole thing is seen through the tissue of lies that you presented. You know, the, the, this is your life. You, you do a job, you work hard, you make money and you buy stuff. Just buy stuff, <laughs> buy this stuff. And the travel culture, all that culture, hippie culture, squat culture, was like, it's anti-stuff. And that's where it starts from. It's like, why do you want to consume? Why does this need to consume? And you know, the consumer ideal has to be destroyed. That is the, that's the ultimate thing. Destroy that ideal and you're well, winning. Well, you, still want, you still want people to buy your record, but don't want to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> that's not consuming. <laughs> Let's buy digital. You buy a little bit of electricity. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's interesting in, in, um, in, in the pandemic period, I've been writing a book with um, Dale Vince. Do you know who he is at all? No. Right, well, no, he, no. well, he was part of your world. He was a traveller for 15 years, going to all the parties. He was at the Battle of Beanfield, got beaten up by the cops there, chucked to the prison right, cell that night. Um, now he's Britain's biggest green energy provider. He runs a company called EcoTrusty. Uh, right. with wind power really? I mean this is interesting this I'm like it's just an example of that culture which was so either ignored or sniffed at or misunderstood at the time there's some serious players coming out of it and to a sense because the levelers has maintained a pretty high level of size for a band without the machine all the time and people like Dale coming out of it and there's a few others dotted around I mean is it, is it was this a surprise or, or do you think you know, coming out of that world, there was, there was a lot of intelligent people in it. And at some point you could see that 
there were going to be some game changers sat around those campfires. In the yeah, 80s. Uh, always. The conversations were always interesting. Some people were brilliant, some people not so. You know, it's just that it was a very diverse group of people. And But most of the people that I, I met and knew were always interested in making a difference somewhere along the line, somehow. Yeah. Did you still... Oh, sorry, Jeremy. Sorry, just disparate group of characters, but, but um, you know, with a lot of extremes, which always make, makes for interesting people. You know, yeah. but, you know, like saying to be green back in the day, you know, was to be, you know, people would take the piss out of you for having so called green values and recycling and stuff like that. You were considered to be a, a lunar, you know, left, lunatic lefty, you know what I mean? And now, now you're considered a bit of an idiot if you don't, you know. So, I mean, that's got to be a good thing, but how these things actually change is fucking beyond me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, you, I'm glad you're well yeah. though with this um, thing, that sounds great. It, it is pretty amazing, I'll send you some links actually, it's, it's quite an interesting character. Your paths will have definitely crossed over the years. You know, I'll uh, tell you who I often think of, is Swampy, do you remember him? Yeah, yeah. Swamp <laughs> I yeah. always wonder what happened. He's, I did look him up actually when I was doing the book and he's still around but he's not, he's not up, up trees anymore because well, he's, he's, he's our age. <laughs> he's gonna get. He's gonna get. Well, to <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's and then go back to Greta Thunberg. This is interesting because you there was a point in time in the mid nineties when it seemed the only flag wave was 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 you and beautiful days and a few other people dot around. But now this is the revenge of the travellers, isn't it? Because all that, all, all the ideology, has suddenly become a mass movement, hasn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. And it's good. That's that, All that stuff's good to see. Extinction Rebellion, that sort of thing, that's, that's directly descended from that, that world. Definitely come out of that somehow. I, know, I don't know if you exactly connect, but there will be. Yeah, there's people, I'm not sure the people running it were, but I know a lot of people who are involved in it are involved in that world. You can see that, you can see that from their artwork and stuff. Yeah, definitely. I mean, do you, do you still feel a, a connection with that world? I know you still work with a lot of people from those days. Yeah, I mean, we, well run by people from those days, but in the broader picture, you know, wherever those people are now, do you still hear from them now and then? And yeah, yeah, yeah I hear, I hear from people I used to live with back in the day, traveller sites and stuff. And you know, in the on the bigger picture, you know, we 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 do stuff with Extinction Rebellion, you know, because it's, it's just a good direct action. We've always believed in direct action, so that's that's a, a no brainer for us, but. But what you're saying about Greta Thunberg and you know young generation is great. It's good to see. You know, for me, I think it's that's that's all you could ask, really. So, so there's other songs in the album, like uh, Four Boys Lost about the drowning. I mean, I mean that's that's a powerful emotive story. It's but is, is it a double edged story? Is, is again like we talk about in the first half of the interview? Is is about your own experience as well, Mark? Is that feeding into that? And also, in a sense, you as well, Jeremy, when you were drowning. With the, with the uh, medication or whatever, I mean, is 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 that, is that part of what that song is? You know, is that framed in there? Not really. Not that was the that's a straight a story. story. Sorry. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty much a straight up story, isn't it, Jez? You, you, you wrote the lyrics now. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's a straight straight up true story, like an old school folk song, really. Yeah. It's, uh, the the actual story is about four guys that drowned off of a small Scottish island called Iona back in the late 90s. And, um, and the story was told to me by one of their, their close friends, you know, over the a fire night, you know, one night. And the story just stuck with me, basically. It's just, yeah, it's just such a, a powerful, emotional story. You know, it just, just kind of went in. Yeah. Oh, so it's just, there's, there's, there's no, um, yeah, because I'm just interested in the idea that maybe at some point three years ago that, you know, you, you were both drowning in different kind of ways and if that was just a word that somehow was niggling. No, I mean, it's probably, it's, it might be slightly in Ghost in the Water, slightly, you know, that sort of like being dragged back down, dragged out by, you know, sort of like almost, uh, almost spiritual, almost, you know, near death is kind of almost. I, I always thought Ghosts in the Walls had a little bit of something to do with your experience with that, i got to say, and I like it all the more for it as well. Yeah, it does, it does. It has that sort of like, you, that it's, it's, it is almost like when you're that obliterated, you're that destroyed, you're being dragged back by almost, you know, Ghosts of the past dragging you back. And the, for me, 
to write it. It was more to write it in, in the way of like all the people of the world, the heroes of the world, of how they've got like better, changing in the lyric to, to how mm. turning me into the world, strangely. You know, it's the world of lyrics, right? It's difficult to explain. <laughs> In that situation that you were in, Mark, was it was a sense of panic? Because I, I know you'd done a couple of drinks before you went in the sea and things. And was it, was it, you know, so a lot of people talk about near death experience being a, a calmness, or, or was it, is it not like that at all? Is it just a really hideous, terrifying panic? Or no, it was exactly the first one. Yeah. Literally, I didn't even know it. Nothing. I didn't know until I woke up in hospital. No, but I didn't even wake up in hospital. I came to it at home, like a few days later. So I didn't know anything about it. I knew nothing. I was, I was probably the most innocent part, part in the whole thing. <laughs> 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 it was particularly tender for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, if you ever witnessed it, it had a worse time than me. <laughs> so when you woke up at home, do you go, what, what, how am I here? Or did you think, <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> I think that what happens is when you have that sort of trauma, you lose all your memory anyway. So it's like a car crash. You're lucky if you can remember it. To deal with it. Yeah, yeah it's like, I, I I don't really remember it. I, I'm very, I've no memory of it. I've, I've been to, to, sort of, to special places to go and find out about it. And no, it, it doesn't exist. It's gone. So a, so, a song like um, Burning Hate Like Fire is, is we'll talk about it again, we'll talk about this before, you know, the great anthemic, anthemic uplifting uh, songs, but with kind of very dark subject matter. Would you say that's a song that captures that dichotomy the best? I think it's an attempt at it anyway. It's an attempt at looking at, at real, like proper mental illness, proper people in, in true despair, true depression, and true disorder, you know, mental disorder of whatever kind, there's many. And it's like how, the, what, what, what do you do with that? What do you do with that energy? What do you do with it? And wh wh where's it directed? Who, who's, who's the victim here? <laughs> is that, that's yeah. what it's about. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, sorry, well, it's kind of subverts the whole subverts the whole pop song, you know, by having by having like a you know a banging tune, but with these really kind of deeply disconcerting lyrics to it. Yeah. So yeah, I particularly like that one. I mean, what what's the resolve in the song? Is is it basically saying, is it? I mean, and fair enough, a lot of great arts done like this. I I feel terrible. I feel shit. Full stop. Or is there a point where he goes? I could turn this around, is it, or is it just basically detailing a feeling at a time? I think, I think I think the resolve is that ultimately we are all alone, and you've got you know who, whatever your mental state is, and you have to compromise. You have to come to sort of like some sort of understanding of yourself. You, you are all you've got, really. At the end of the day, well, I I think as well. You know the the line. You know he says I'm sitting in my room, uh, you know, thinking an anxious thoughts, and you know to me we've all done that, and so. That song lets me know that I'm not alone, and that, that's another reason why I like it. And I think I think there's any kind of positive resolve. That's it. You know, a song that describes those kind of emotions lets everyone else of us that have those emotions know that they're not alone. So, in in a sense, it's saying um, you're not you're not the only person. You're not alone when you're alone because everyone else is alone. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You're not you know. <laughs> We're all alone together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which 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 surely is is one of the great things about a band, isn't it? Because it does create that sense of, of a support community, isn't it? Where um, yeah. I mean, how often do you hear when people from our generation, the punk rock generation, talk about uh, I felt a complete misfit, I felt like an outsider, and I found this world full of outsiders that mm -hmm. I could that we could all relate to each other and. This, yeah. is just, this is just a grown-up version of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is exactly that. Uh, yeah, and it is good. To, to, you know, we're all outside, but it's good to belong to something. Yeah, to belonging is a really important thing. I think it's really it's very hard to belong to things in this world. There's so many different things. You, people are like identifying all over the place with different things in order to, to belong to something. And you know, the, the belonging to the levels has been very, very beneficial to me. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah in a sense, that's is this what the levelers do? This is the core of it, isn't it? It's a it's, it's a band that creates communities, a community of fans, and Beautiful Days is the pinnacle of that community when 18, 20, 25, I never know what the number is, but it's a lot of people come together and you can go on your own and you can make 50 friends in 10 minutes and it's it is all 
it's all those people in one place all at once. They may not like, they may not even vote for the same political parties or even like the same bands at the festival, but something yeah. holds them all together and creating that community is important. And like you say, in these times where everything's fractured, there's actually a space for these like-minded people to, to be. Well, yeah, let's hope we can do it again. Because it's, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's this time of year and here we are indoors. Yeah, I, I did so, say... I just, I just say, times, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jeremy. In, in, I just say in these times of like, you know, grab, you know, grab, take, take, and get whatever you can for yourself. You know, like Beautiful Days is a shining example of like caring, sharing, you know, gathering. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's, and it also, it kind of expands on all the themes of the band musically and lyrically as well. That's one of the things I really like about it. You know, it, it has a lot of the English folk stuff, but it puts in the context, the punk stuff, and even like the more modern electronic dance music, which you have on there as well. There, there, there is a common thread that sort of hangs it all together, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. there is. Yeah, there really is. And, 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 and generally, the, the one we want is that, that, that all the performers are great at what they do. And so that all the music is, is mixed up. It doesn't, it, there's no genreism going on. I hate that. And so, it's a, so it works really well because everybody who does play there just gives it their all because they know they're amongst a, a, a broader playing field. It's not a competition. We've been to some festivals in the past we played back in the day where like everybody's in the charts at more or less the same time. And there's a real sort of like there's edginess to that. There's a real competitive <laughs> element that, which, you know, which is fun at the time. It's fun at the time, you know. Those bastards will fucking have them and you know, <laughs> slagging us off on the stage there, and we're going to go there and do this and all that sort of stuff. That's great, it's in its place, and I'm glad we survived it. But <laughs> I prefer an atmosphere where you've got like a DJ over there, and a folk musician over there, and a hardcore punk band here, and like some Bulgarian musicians over there. It's much more interesting, much more spectacular. Mm. Mm. I remember talking, the, um, talking to the singer from Google Bordello the first time they played Beautiful Days just after they come off stage and he just was like made up because he was going, he said, I've never stood on a, a big size festival stage and looked out and I haven't seen McDonald's and Burger King and all that shit. He said, that's the yeah. first time. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, yeah, we're very proud, you know, non-sponsored. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, those, those are the small victories, aren't they? Those are the, those, those when, that's when you're ans answering your own questions, isn't it? Why can't the world be like this? We'll, we'll just do it in our little own yeah. space, isn't it? Yeah. So, it's, so back in that day, when, when you, well, when you start to have top five albums, you know that period you talk about there, Mark, yeah. you know, with the bands and the sense of rivalry, was it, was it actually any unlikely um, bands actually supportive of you? Because you, you're very, you, there, was, there was definitely like a lot of those other bands you could sort of fit together in their own worlds, but you, were sort of, you definitely didn't fit in, into any world at all in that. No, you know, we didn't. We didn't. We made like, I was friends with quite a lot of them, you know, because I lived in London and stuff. So I was friends with quite a lot of people who were in the bands. But yeah, not directly connecting or anything like that, you know, like hang out with Popperly and stuff, go hang out with them, um, whatever, you know, just different people at different times. But um, hang on, I'm going to hand the note. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so it's difficult, but um, yeah, but no, we, we, we were always our own thing, so it didn't really work so much for us in that world. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's like some really unlikely super hipster band going, you know what guys, I'm really into you, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> I think I think the funniest one was probably menswear when we did a few gigs with them, and then the guitarist Glenn turned out to be a bit of a fan, but then he, but then he was also, you know, mad into Sepultura, and he could play like you know, like <laughs> our riffs and stuff, you know. <laughs> All right, so he, he was kind of like um, somebody from a, a different world shoved into a suit to be a men's yeah. to be guitar player. No, secret fans out there, I don't think there are any. I keep listening to sort of like a, a Desert Island Disc, waiting for somebody to like actually admit to like in the band, but it's not, it's not happened yet. <laughs> I'll tell you, I heard someone the other day going, oh, Le Level is part of my youth, was Holly Willoughby. Oh, um, yeah. Wow. It was on telly. I yeah. can't remember what someone asked the question, and she said, oh, no, I wasn't doing that at university. I was listening to the Levelers and, and going to festivals or something like that. And I was like, oh. There you go. There, 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 there's your unlikely fan, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. the end. So, so, so what are the plans now? I mean, I know we can't really make any plans, but... 
I think our, our plans are literally to get this album out and to survive, basically, mm -hmm. somehow. I don't know. Really don't know. We're just, it's like we're like watching, uh, we're watching, uh, uh, you know, looking into a void, really, of like <laughs> activity for us. It's like, what, what, we, what can we expect to do? We were booking dates for next year. That's what everyone's doing. But as to whether or not they're going to be allowed to happen, who knows? I mean, do you, do you see much of each other in this time? I mean, obviously you can legally, but it's, it's one of those, some, some bands are supposed to haven't seen each other for six months and some sort of have like, you know, go sit in each other's garden to drink tea or something. No, we don't really live that close to each other, so it's difficult, but um, we do. I here. see Charlie. Charlie every now and then because we, we do live quite close but uh, more by accident than, than anything else mm -hmm. mm. touched yeah. by zoom like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean I guess when you're off the road you don't really hang out anyway because been touring is quite intense isn't it so I mean you spent six months sat in a bus with people you don't want to spend the next six months sat in the pub with them do you oh some people do don't they some people are, are weird <laughs> yeah you know, uh, yeah well it's 30 years you know we, we, fight, we, we know how everybody is we, just, we check in with each other and that's that, that's mm. that makes everyone's good i was i was actually surprised that you didn't do some kind of version of beautiful days i was speaking to laura about it the other day and i was i just i mean they, i mean I, I understand the logic it's, it is an outdoor festival and it works as the outdoor community, but I just thought to hold the dates, there could have been something in its space to make. Yeah, we thought about it. We did think about it, and it's like it's just, it's just, it's not what it is. It would be too much not what it is. But if people are doing it, and we're going to contrib contribute to it anyway because they're doing it themselves. So we're going to contribute to what they're doing rather than us leading the way. They're leading it, and we're going to contribute to what they're doing. Oh, they're just going to do an on online fans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot, that's a cool idea. In fact, they're going to have a party on the day, basically. Have, it, have a party for us on the day. Are oh, they actually going to the site to have a, a, a socially no, distant... No, no, no. Homes, just everyone in their own homes or wherever they want to go. You know, so we've that, done that, a T-shirt, written a playlist. That's, yeah, it's, a per it's perfect, isn't it? It actually makes complete sense because... The community is as important as, as the headline band is, really. So it's just people get to see it once a year, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It is. 